Hi everyone, this is Matt Romanowski from Trailbreak.net. I want to do a quick video today on AIM Race Studio 2 math channels. I know there's a lot of confusion and some uh, mistakes that are done in them, so I wanted to try to show people how things go and how they work real quick. So, first thing we'll look at a little bit is I have some uh, data file open from Watkins Glen. We have a speed trace, we have all the channels that go with it. Um, and then we have the gear channel from AIM that comes with Race Studio that doesn't work. So we'll see how to fix it. So there's two ways to get into our math channels. We can use the square root button here, or we can go modify and then math channels. And when we get into the math channel window, there's a lot of information here, but we can break it down into easier chunks to work with. So the first area that we see here is all the math channels that we've made. And we can delete them and insert them. The next part is the channel parameters of the properties of those math channels. So we have a, the name, a unit of measure, the full scale, which will be the maximum, the zero scale, which is the minimum, the sampling rate, just like if it was an actual channel, it would be how fast it's computed, a filter, which is a um, moving average, so we can have that zero to five, the number of decimal figures that we want to use, and then it asks us if it's a speed channel and if we want to use it as a speed reference, which is something um, that most of the time we won't use either of those. The next area that we have is what actually is the formula that we're using and then we have um, the formula constructions. So we have a list of constants so we could do things like kilometers to miles an hour, uh, miles an hour to kilometers, miles per hour to feet per second, and a number of things like that and also some more kind of car specific ones that the mass of the car the wheelbase so if we use those in formulas and they that number changes a lot we can use those constants so that we can update the constant and we don't have to go through and update all the math channels that use that we have um, the symbols and operators which is you know our addition our subtraction multiplication division um, we have our functions which we have things like square root um, exponents sine cosine tangent the ones that we'll use a lot more would be our high pass and low pass, our bit operators, bit and, bit or, um, and then we'll have our others that we use all the time, which is a greater than, a less than, um, and if statements are the ones that we use the most. The other little area that we have here is a nice little feature is we can copy um, math channels into this box using the add, you know, select them and use the add button. And then if we have multiple tests open, we can paste them back into other tests, which is a nice little feature. The last area that we want to look at is that we can import and export our math channels. So anytime we import a new set, it's going to overwrite whatever's here. So I always advise people, if you have any math channels that you've made, or even if you haven't made and you were going to import a set from a friend or something like that, you want to first export your set save them I save them in a math channels folder and these are the standard ones that come with it you can type your name in there and save them that way you never lose what the program came with and you always have those to work with and the same thing is when you go to import a set it's going to give you the warning you're going to overwrite them if you want to continue you say yes and then you can import them and I have different math channel sets that I've made over time and I've updated um, and I keep track of those so if I ever make a mistake I can go back and see how I did it before or um, fix whatever problems I might have created. So the first thing we're gonna do is let's look at that gear math channel and what we see here is it gives us engine and the aim math channels work very literal so it has to have that exact channel name but we don't call our engine RPM engine we call it RPM so we can delete out engine and we're gonna replace it with RPM from the identifier I always like to click on the identifier to make sure that we don't have any sort of spelling errors. The next thing that we see is a problem is the speed one. We don't have that channel. So we can go in and we can delete out speed one and we're going to use the GPS speed. I like to use GPS speed for a lot of these um, when it needs a speed reference because it's always very accurate and it um, it doesn't have any problems with tire growth or slippage or anything like that. The next two parts is the beginning gear number, which is one, and the high gear number, which in this case it's five for this car. And then we can use this test channel button and it tells us it's okay. If we had done that earlier, it would have popped up and it, it'll tell you which identifier is wrong so you can fix it. So if we say okay here, 
we're going to go back and we see now our math channel works. We can see here it's in fifth gear, a downshift to third, another quick upshift back up to fifth, and we can see all the shifts in here. So now we have some good data there. The next one I want to show you is if we want to make a math channel. So we can click on the square root button, and then we're going to insert, and from Roger Cadell's list that's going to be with this post is we're going to have our set of math channels and one that he does is corner radius so we're gonna put in corner radius and then from that spreadsheet which I'm gonna pull up here as he gives us it's a radius in feet with all the information and I'm gonna cut and paste this in so if we copy it we can paste it back into our math channel box we're gonna set our full scale to 2000 we can set our minimum scale to zero. We can set our unit to feet that Roger told us. The sampling rate at 10 is good because it matches up with the GPS. The filter we don't really need on this one. Two place is plenty. We can really set that to zero because we're not going to be concerned with our quarter, corner radius down below a zero feet. We can test this channel and it says it works okay. So let's say okay. Now we have that math channel in. It's going to put it down towards the bottom here. So we find our corner radius, and it's already on. And here's our math channel. We can go through and we look, and this is Watkins Glen. So if we look, the minimum driven corner radius in here is about 187 feet inside turn one. And you can do the same for um, every other corner. and it's a topic for another day but we can look at the shape of these corner radiuses and it'll tell us if it's an early apex or a late apex um, or a middle apex and gives us some ways to compare drivers and different laps and everything else so hopefully this has helped you out a little bit with math channels and what to do if you have any questions feel free to hit me up matt at trailbreak.net post comments back to this thread or the video and i hope to do some more videos for you later thanks